What's up guys, Brian here. Today I'm gonna be breaking down the differences in between the Maxxis Minion DHF and the Asagai. I have extensive experience with both of them and I'll tell you the pros and cons of each and maybe the different situations and riding styles each one favors so you can make the best decision for your ride. So let's get into it. So setting these tires side by side, you can immediately see a bunch of differences, but the most pronounced is that the Asagai has a transition knob that splits the center tread and the cornering knobs, whereas the Minion has a much more defined channel in between the center knobs and the corner knobs. There's many other differences in the sipings and the profile of the knobs themselves, but in the most basic sense, that's what really separates these tires. And you can really feel it on the trail. So to start with the Minion, uh, that bigger channel and the more lugged out corner knobs just allows the corner knobs to really dig in when you put the tire on edge. And it really requires you to commit to getting those corner knobs engaged when you want to go corner. Um, you're gonna find it a little bit more wandery in that transition zone when you're not leaning the bike that much. So it really requires that rider to be really active and kind of intentful with their inputs on the bike when you corner it. And then also the corner knobs like to really dig in. So I prefer the DHF on softer dirt when you can really get those side knobs to engage, sink into the soil. On hard pack, sometimes it's a little hard to judge because the side knobs don't have anything to dig into and they kind of squirm and they'll, they'll sometimes let go uh, sort of unpredictably. But in contrast on the Asagai, the presence of that transition knob gives you a real constant level of grip throughout an entire articulation of lean angle on the tire. It's much more forgiving to ride, but I also feel like it has a bit of a vaguer feel. Uh, the tire always seems to sit on top of the knobs just because there's so much rubber and there's not a whole lot of space in between them. It never really gives the knobs a chance to dig into the ground. Uh, it will do it on really soft stuff, it just doesn't feel as connected to the grip. In most situations, this tire has an insane amount of grip. And I think it is just has to do with like the amount of actual rubber that's on the ground. This tire is just really one I can trust. But like I was saying earlier, there just isn't the amount of feedback or that locked in feeling that the DHF provides. So for me on hard pack and in dry conditions, the Asagai is really my go-to. It is super predictable. Um, it just puts a ton of rubber on the ground and you can really trust that front end. It doesn't do anything weird, but when the conditions get a little bit better or if it's a little muddier, especially with clay dirt, that's having a bit harder time clearing the tire, uh, the DHF I think performs a lot better. And just those really greasy situations where there's not a lot of feedback from the front end anyway, the Asagai just tends to kind of pack up and it gets really hard to manage or predict. Whereas the DHF, I think, performs a little bit better in that situation. So it really depends on the conditions you're riding and the feel you wanna get out of the front tire. For me, riding in California throughout the summer, the Asagai is what I have on my bike most of the time. It's hard to go wrong, like I said. But for me, the DHF comes out when the trails are really tacky. You can dig in those side knobs. And when maybe it's like not even close to needing a shorty, but there's still a little bit of mud out on the trails or it's just softer dirt that you can really get the knobs uh, to dig into. Like for example, I was racing at Crankworx Rotorua and the track wasn't muddy. It was just really greasy and the dirt was sticking to the tires for a little bit, but it would eventually clean off. And I started out on an Asagai and it just was really hard to predict what the front end would do. So I switched to the DHF and it was clearing a little better and I was able to predict what the front end was doing a little more accurately. With getting more feeling from the DHF, it's sometimes easier to feel like when it'll let go, 
Um, while the Asagai has a massive amount of grip, sometimes it's harder to predict where exactly that edge is. And you get more tuned into that the more you ride each of the tires, but I do think that's kind of more of a thing that favors the DHF is like really knowing when those side knobs are at the limit and kind of figuring out when it'll let go. I think the exception there is in like straight hard pack, like I mentioned before, when the side knobs are gripping, but they're kind of squirming a little bit. And then you'll sometimes get the front end to like just push out uh, kind of abruptly. But anytime there's better traction out there, I think the DHF, like you can really like feel what those knobs are doing. But like I said on the Asagai, you are kind of just riding on top of the knobs and that gives you tons of grip, but it's a little harder to predict. I think I reiterated myself in a bunch of different ways there, but I just really wanted to translate like what I'm feeling from each of these tires. I think they're both excellent options, but you can really fine tune the feel of them uh, based on what you're riding. But if you haven't tried one of these tires, I would definitely recommend that you do because uh, there are pros and cons to each. And I think it would be beneficial for anyone to try one out. It, it really doesn't hurt. So um, that's my two cents. I think the last thing is that the DHF will roll a bit faster and it is lighter in each of the casing options. So that's something to take into account as well. If you're going for something a little faster rolling, uh, this will give you uh, a little bit of an advantage in that area. But there is a strong argument for the Asagai and a ton of, and there's a reason a ton of people love this tire and are willing to take a slight weight and rolling penalty. That's my breakdown. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. I'm happy to cover anything I missed in the video. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.